How are you doing today, Michael? Thank you. I'm really fine because I had a great meeting in the morning and it was great discussion. So feel good. That's great. That's great. Can you please let us know what you're working on, which I understand is going to be a lot, but for people to know what you're working on and what your current point of pride is of what you've accomplished so far. Okay. I don't think it will be long. It's quite a simple thing because I'm a simple man. So I am, I am building wasteless world for all. That's what I do. I do it for the last nine years. And I implement waste prevention principles in companies and businesses. Currently a leading network in 102 countries to do that. What are the, what are the basic things which I can do is, is generally waking up the awareness of people on the topics, which are, which are not seen by many. So waking up the human aspect in, in business, delivering the possibility of utilizing the tools, which are referring to the process of changing mindset. And this is something which everyone can apply. This is something which everyone easily adopt. And the first step all the time is to wake up. So to, to wake up and to realize that something is wrong. That's one step. But the next one is to use the tools which we have developed already and we are implementing for a long time and to try to apply them. Unfortunately, today I cannot speak from my office because there are some repairs here in our flat. But otherwise, I will show you what I mean with, with that. So, yes. So, it is really a simple man work. And... Simple aim. It is simple. It is quite easy to understand it, though, even though it is so big. And as we talked, you mentioned, you want to work with every company in the world. You want to wake up as many people as possible. I appreciate it because it's so, it's so simple. And as you call it, you call yourself human. It's so humane, right? So yeah, what, what are you the most proud of? at this point of the process, because I'm doing the same for nine years already. And I did not move a single centimeter in, in other direction. So there has been a <laughs> difficult times. There has been easy times as well, but my intention is to go in one direction. I call myself a marathon runner, but the difference is that I run one marathon for many years and still in the same, in the same direction. What make me mostly proud is probably that the wake up calls, which I deliver on schools, universities, companies, events, have all the time the same impact. And the impact is that the people are speechless. For a few minutes, they have no words, but after I call it the, I call it the storm came. And at this moment, everybody come with questions and asking and what surprised me and what makes me proud that it doesn't matter whether to whom I speak, whether they are young, old board members, general managers or workers, seniors or children, all act same way, no difference, which means that I speak language which they understand. And this is something which was missing for a long time because we are even now we are developing languages for IT. We have a language for financing, even for education. But this special type of language is not understood by everyone or is misunderstood. Even the law is written in a way that it can be explained different ways. So one say right and at the same time you can explain it as a left and both are correct in some way. And this is not the way how we should do it. The way is different. If we are not able to speak the language of efficiency, as we call it, we should learn it. We should learn to ask questions. We should learn to answer questions. We should learn to shame for the wrong things, not to, not to be proud of them and to promote the good ones. And this is all what is connected to education itself, to the mindset of people and businesses 
And this is what I'm proud of, that I can deliver this. And no matter which group I speak to, everyone understands the same. And everyone is willing to build Wasteless World together with me. This is how we gain on the power, how we gain on the strength, how we gain on the global approach. And this is what will, what is already changing the world. When you're speaking about the marathon, right, and the consistency, the focus that you have had in building what you call Industry 5.0, can you, can you explain to us whether you have always been like that? So being consistent is something that it was in your blood or you had to learn or maybe this mission inspired you to be consistent how did that go? i realized that already when i was a child i was the same probably because i have in my office again i cannot show it i have a, a flute a recorder generally which i which was bought to me by my mom because i have a speech disorder and i have learned how to work with my with my breath correctly to speak correctly and you know it's packed in a in a, in a package made from made from one material available in 1970s from leather generally from leather and i saw it as a eight years old boy i saw it and i made this a package for this recorder and still it's working. The recorder is still there. And when I realized that, it was like enlightening to understand that I follow this way already before knowing that it will be this way. And about the consistency, my intention was all the time to be the best. I have not got the best marks in school or so, but we passed in a work which I did, no matter which it was whether the steel factory worker or whether I work for a logistics company or anyone else every time my intention was to be the best and that helped me probably to the consistency and the consistency helped me to this aim what was maybe different when I was a young worker or a young entrepreneur I was not I was not able to to visualize the aim so so well, but with the age came even this other possibility to see it see it clearly and even more and more important. I collected a lot of experience within the years, which I can apply at the moment to the work which I do. Wow! This so is... I think it was in me, but somehow you have to grow it up yeah i like what you said about this responsibility i took note of it as a responsibility of focus which is very much in line with what i work on and what i want to work on professionally as well me and in the world which is this radical responsibility right of everything that you do and have in life is the responsibility that you have and it's your the, the the outcome of your choices whether you made them with that idea that you need to take them very consciously and consciously or you didn't or you just lived on autopilot so all of that for me is radical responsibility and i had a different kind of awakening when i had personal challenges and difficulties that really forced me to change my ways. Otherwise it would have been the same challenge all the time. Right. And I didn't want to leave it like that anymore. And I am taking a, this radical, as I call it, responsibility because it's not about blaming myself for things, right? It's not helpful much to, to blame, <laughs> especially to blame yourself, but it is about, okay, I have this. What do I do with this now? Right. How can I fix it if I want to fix it? And I appreciate that as we talked, I hear a lot this, of this from you in how you're talking that I want to change the world. I want to see it happen. 
I take the responsibility of not being liked, of not being, you know, appreciated, being banned and hated. And I don't know, all the uh, different things that you have gone through, because there is a mission that is slightly different than, you know, it's much more important than this. I will say that it is important to understand who you are. That's one thing. But the next thing is to really don't, don't, or let's say different words, try to be the role model. If you would like to ask the others to do what you are asked them. So you have to be the first who try this work. Even if I work in a factory, I am working in a, in a boiler suit with the workers because I need to try what they are doing. Every 14 days, I'm loading a full truck of cable drums, empty cable drums, just to prove that it is possible. Yes, it is. And, you know, to load seven tons in one hour for 50 years old, man, it's not an easy task anymore. But still, I'm able to do and why I do it, because if it will be only the forklift with we will load, the capacity of the truck will be 194 pieces. When I load it with my hands and I put it the right way, which the forklift cannot do, then I fit there up to 400 pieces. And at that moment, it's profitable. But before, it will be more, let's say, the cost related to the transportation of the used cable drums will be too high, probably. And it will be not realized. I'm doing that for three years already. And we are implementing new and new. And this is why to become the one to who can teach the others is, is very important. And I cannot become it without trying the work. Maybe some can do, I cannot. And I do recommend to follow this way because it is delivering so-called palpable results, which are very important because you can touch them. It's not Excel, it's not, it's not a data sheet. No, it's a physical thing which you can touch. And what is it? Interesting, I have learned a few years ago that generally the, we call it the power of touch. So if you touch something, this memory, so the, the memory of the sense is one of the strongest in your life. Because if you see something, you can forget it. But if you burn your fingers as a child on a fire, you will remember it for, for the entire life. Not what you have seen, not what you have heard even not what you have on your, on your tongue, but touch. It's a very important part. So this is why we included it in an in a environment of the Industry 5.0 and we make out of it one of the tools called Power of Touch. It's really, really work well, especially in transformation projects. Wow, I'm very curious about this because I'm a kinesthetic person in many ways. My muscle memory, my physical memory is very, very strong. So it's kind of talking to me as well. I, yes. yeah. You. I wanted to ask, because you say, yes, lead by example. Yes. Be the leader of the kind, you know, as I call them and many other people as well, called servant leaders, which I totally see you being a great incarnation of that. So what is your typical day like then? What is your work look? How does it look like every day? So generally I wake up at four in the morning, go to the office. So somewhere between four and four 30, I'm in the office. I ride on electric unicycle to the office. So I do not use car. It's great because you get refreshed in the morning and it's really a great tool to transport. Then I start my day by checking up the general LinkedIn, the updates, the social media. When there is a day when I have a conference somewhere, usually in Asia or Australia in the morning. So I take part in, in conference or a meetups and so on in, in the morning time, because this is convenient enough for them. Then I dedicate the, the standard working time, which starts at eight in my country or nine. So I dedicate to working with my clients in Czech Republic and in Europe. So advisor, I visit factories, I do similar stuff. And in the afternoon, when the US wake up, so starting four, 
I start a bit of work in a bit of US partners or Canada or South America. And again, discussions, preparations of projects. I'm writing blog, reporting about preparing my presentations just to, to make it clear for me to prepare a presentation for an event. It's, it's about 14 days, one month's time, because not only to write it, the writing part is quite easy for me already, but to prepare, to be able to deliver it to the clients because of my speech disorder. This is why I have to learn it. Like if you are, if you are an, an actor and you have to learn, then I have to learn all my speeches and I don't like to deliver one speech twice. So generally the number of keynotes is referring to the number of events, which I participate in. There is, I think 250 at the moment or 350 don't remember anymore. So this is what I do then around five to six. I leave the office, so after about 14 hours and I came home and I finished some of the work which I started. So I do at home and usually between 10 and, and midnight, I go to bed, sleep four hours and start again. So that's the standard process. Oh, it sounds very intense. <laughs> Do you have time for rest or for family time? That's a nice question. If you do what you love have you, and you do it really, it's your passion. It's really something which delivers. There is no, no border. I do not divide between this time and that time because for me, it's one time. And there is one very important point for me. I do not, I know that I cannot waste a single second of my life because it will be wasting and I, I am for waste prevention. So I try to utilize every single second. Of course, I know I need a rest. So I sleep for four hours. I have learned that it's, it's enough for me. The riding of the electric unicycle, it, it improved my, bo my body core generally. So it's every single trip to the work or I make a long trips, improvement of my health at the same time. So I combine it, I combine this, this two lives into one, because I think it is necessary. We have limited time on the, on the planet. You know, my granddad is 99. If I will be 99, I will have a lot of time to do, but I don't know whether I will be. So this is why for me, it is so important. It is intense, but I have learned, for example, the speed up meditations and so on. Time to time, I close my eye in, in my office and I see for 10 minutes to recover. And then I am fine and I, ca I can start again. What I did not mention during the time, I don't go anywhere to eat. I cook myself in my office. I have two devices mainly, air fryer and rice cooker. Both are unbelievable great and adaptable devices, which I already made one, one cookbook on the air fryer. And I'm preparing the next one on the rice cooker because both help me to learn to cook wasteless. And it's very interesting because I make a poll where I ask people globally what they use their rice cooker for. I was surprised 80% is using just for cooking the rice <laughs> because it is so variable device. You can go make soups. You can heat food very efficiently. Rice is great, of course, but all the rest, I like hot chocolate to make there five minutes. If you put milk there and then the cocoa and sugar and you make it five minutes, not more, because if you do more, I don't know why, but then it's on the top of the, of the milk is this stuff mm. disgusting. I don't know how it's called in English. I don't like it, but if you do five minutes, it's not there and it's still, it's hot enough to drink it. So, and I have learned to cook so much in these two years that generally my, one of my videos as, as I recorded to make potatoes filled with bacon and with cheese. It's, it become the second most visited video on my YouTube channel with, I think 26,000 views or something like that. And it, it's growing every day. I don't say a single word in there. <laughs> it's fascinating. Fascinating. 
<laughs> so, and in between the time, I record part part of my work on a video, I play the recorder, I make songs, I draw pictures sometimes, but everything is connected to this aim, every single activity. It's like going in one direction, no matter what I do, I go in this one direction permanently. It's fascinating because it is in a way very modern, but also very it's omnipresent, like how you say you employ the principles of nature in your work. It sounds very balanced to me that there is everything that you need every day. And it is, it is changing. It's variable because you make it so you, you also, I suppose, boredom is not to waste. There is, there is time to be bored. There is time to be active. Yes. Um, very interesting. I am curious to ask if there was one thing or a couple of things that you could share with people, right? Or the companies that you want to talk to, what would you like for them to learn about waste? I will show it because it's, it is important. Usually I use my business card. So let me take something different. As I said, I am limited here. So, <laughs> so. Let's pretend this is a business card. Okay. So we meet for the first time. I'm a, an old schooler. I am used to give you my business card. I hand it over to you. You take it. Everything is fine. Just now erase this memory. We meet again and again, you would like to have my business card, but there is one difference. We are not sitting in one room, but coming to each other. Okay. And as we come to each other in the middle, someone plays completely new garbage bin, completely new. As we come to each other, the business card fall down, same as me, and it fall down in the garbage bin. I do not have any second one. So you, we look in the garbage bin, it's stainless steel, completely new, empty, only this business card inside. And you said, okay, Michael, I will take the business card. I take it out, check it, apologize with you, hand it over to you. If you take it from me in Czech Republic, you take the right to get the penalty of 20, 200,000 US dollars. What? Yes. And it's not only in Czech Republic. So, and here I will explain why. It's connected to the legislation which define the word waste. Because in many legislations all around the world, there is waste declared as something which you place on a location dedicated to waste storage or you hand it over to waste company, which means, and that's all, which means I take something different. I take this rubber iPhone, which means that if you place, here is the edge of the garbage bin. Okay. And just now look what the law says. Here is a business card. Here is waste. You see nothing happened with it. Mm -hmm. The item is unchanged and still it changed its value here. It's a value for you. Here is a, your cost because it become waste and you have to pay for waste management and, 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 and so what you do to prevent this to happen, you just stretch your hand and catch the item between here and becoming the waste. And this is how the waste prevention works. Just stretch your hand. Of course, because I'm doing it on a, on an industrial scale, it's not so easy. You have to know a lot of about logistic processes and so on, lean management and so on. But in fact, it's so simple, but why do people don't do it? Because nobody explained them this principle. Nobody explained them that if, if they get lost this other engagement ring in a garbage, they cannot take it out. According to the law, they are not allowed to because the garbage is not their garbage anymore is their cost, but the garbage is owned by someone else. So, and this is what I am telling to the companies. So you see, it's very easy to prevent waste happen. You just don't let it happen. And this is exactly for all the four types or the four, four categories of waste, physical, social, urban, and process waste, which we recognize in industry 5.0. And it's all the time the same. So this is the first what the company needs to learn. 
and to understand it, I show them images which they never consider they are real. For example, one of the image is, was produced by NASA, US Space Agency, and it show up, it visualize the so-called space debris. This is a landfill which generally, uh, most of them created human on the orbit, 197 million pieces smaller than 10 centimeters, 750,000, 10 to 30 centimeters, and 80,000, about 30 centimeters. This is on our orbit. And if you take back in time, or if you think back in time, it's just a few decades when we started to go to the orbit. And there is a, such a big, large landfill. And the next image is was made by the one of the caricaturist or painter from Algeria, I think. He, he pictured the earth and on it, it's a, it's a digger which dig inside. And this is the image which is clear identification of the behavior of business and people towards the planet. The only place where we can live. We dig inside and we hunt for more because more become the only criteria of success. No matter what, more money, more people, more businesses, just more. And that's, that's crazy. That's completely wrong. Why should be more better? Even in logistic, I am a logistician. So for, for more than 30 years in a logistics, more or less can be more. This is one of the principles which I implement. So, uh, if I can spend less time in a work, so let's say, do not work eight hours, but just four hours a day. And I am able to deliver my work, which was done in eight hours in four hours. Why should I spend eight hours there? Why should I work five days in a week when four days will be fine? And right now, long time after I implement this and start to talk about this, many countries start to learn that in a digital age which in which we are living, is five days working work or uh, working week or eight hours working day. It's generally nonsense. Not the salary. The salary should stay. That's fine. But if I am, of course, we cannot do that in all the occupations or in all the jobs. But many and COVID show us how many can change from one moment to another. The issue is that the legislation is behind. We don't have such a regulations. In my country, which is Czech Republic in the middle of Europe, the eight hours working day was legitimized in 1918. And it was the 48th law presented and legalized by new country because in 1918 was my country created. Czechoslovakia at that time was the name. And this was the 48th law approved. So, and since 1918, we have to know that we have to work 8.5 hours, not considering computer, fax machines before, whatever. So for more than 100 years, we are, fo we are following 100 years old regulations that are wrong. And in some countries, even longer. And so it's because it's full of waste, the legislation. Because you can explain it this way, that way. And if you look at the new laws, the new laws generally are not created. They are changing the old, old laws, putting more gaps inside and more holes and explain it different. This is why we need a very special industry, which is law and justice. Why do we need a special industry for this? It, every law should be very simple, understandable to everyone. Why do I need a lawyer? That's wrong. And I know what I'm speaking. I have the ability or I was part of some, some disputes and so on. It was unpleasant. And I try all the time to learn and really it's so complicated that you need them. But in fact, you should not be needing them, but that's the way. So these are the things which I'm showing to the people. I have to weigh them up. I have to show them how to prevent waste happen and just 
14 days ago, I had a great, and it was the first education cycle, generally three hours delivered for people from government and related. And tomorrow, one of the, one of the students, I will come to visit my office that I am very happy because, you know, it's a special place. You saw it. So every single piece of furniture made by my hand from obsolete items sourced in factories. And when you enter, you will understand what is Industry 5.0 immediately. You can touch it, you can feel it, you can do it, you can become a part. I will give you, so this is inspiration for you to come. I will give you a broken vinyl record. You will not see that it's broken, it's broken or it's rated NG because of the sound. So you don't see it on the record. And you will be able to make out of it a bowl bowl for your fruits or so it will be the unique in the world because not a single one even if you make two of this from the similar record it will not be the same because i will give you only the heat gun i will show you how to process and it will be your origin and that's exactly how we process because why should ten thousand broken vinyl records become waste when they do not sound well why shouldn't they serve better? And the same, if there is an old bus, why should it be scrapped? And why not to make a shelter or a small restaurant out of it? There was recently, at the end of last year, one government in Africa, I think Nigeria, not sure about the country, they start to sell old unused planes. And you can buy even Airbus for 2000 US dollars. It was not flying. And what? You know Airbus? It's a school. It's a nursery. It's a small city. It's much more than a broken piece of metal, aluminium. No, that's not in my eyes. And this is why we developed so-called 6R methodology to open these eyes to others. It's, it's based on the three R's, which generally are not working, they are just lies. And we put three more hours above and which, if you learn it, you will see the world with my eyes. And that's great because you will realize that it's no waste. It's really wasteless because everything what is there can be used again. And you mention it that I really follow the nature. That's true because there is only one role model. I was asked many times who is the role model of my work or industry 5.0, whether Elon Musk or Bill Gates or no, it's nature. Because nature does not waste. This is one reason. And the second reason, nature act when it needs to act. So when there is more rain, it grows faster. When there is no rain, it slows down the growth. But it acts because it's right now is the situation. So it's agile. We use this word agile. It's great example. And why should I compete with the nature? No, I am part of the nature. So let's live with it in a harmony, the same with time. I wanted to conclude because of everything we discussed and it seems very interesting conversation. Have humans been always so wasteful as we are right now or did something change? And if yes, then what? Uh, it is interesting. There is even an archaeological study related to that. I just wrote it, uh, read it in New York Times or somewhere I don't remember, which concludes that it is clearly visible that in the times of scarcity, the people did not waste so much, which is related to the fact that we are living in the times where, which cannot be called scarcity, at, at least until today. I don't know where this big amount of wasting started. I know almost exactly when single use items has been introduced. It was in eight, I think. And the first item was the single use razor introduced by Gillette generally at the time. And it was the first consumable item, which is considered to be a single use. But I, I don't think that at the time it was the start of this big wasting. It came later and I think it must come with some connection to the change of economical systems 
because in the past was not so important whether you produced 10 cars or 100 cars but it was important that you produce so many cars that you satisfied your customers no more nor less but this connection between the between the production volume and the real demand not speaking about market demand market demand is completely nonsense and not connected to reality but about the real demand it's so different that i have a client which produce new products and we have realized that 80 percent of the production is waste new product it become waste because it will be never sold the market is full it's oversaturated and still we keep on production there are even graveyards of new cars you will not believe this this exists so the answer is no the people has not been wasted so much even if you look at the home of your parents or grandparents you will see exactly the same but we have learned it we adopted very fast and why i think that one of the reason is that waste industry start to start to tell us that they take care and at that moment we said okay we have someone who take care it's called it's entire industry waste industry it has even the name in it so we can do what we are used to what is easy and the waste industry used this they use a psychological tools really advanced one like one is presented in everyone so if you if you stay you can try it stand in front of a group of people and ask them whether they recycle mm -hmm. probably 80 90 percent in europe 60 in other destinations put their hands up but they are lying majority of them doesn't tell you the truth they are not recycling they are sorting mm -hmm. sorting is not recycling it's just the beginning of very long journey to recycling so here you see how the waste industry change your mind in a way that you think that if you throw plastic in a yellow bin that you are recycling but that's not true and this is exactly the point when i think started the big waste volume that we think that somebody will do it for you it was a wake-up call for me when i realized in 2010 that that's not the case that we really throw away completely new at the time it was wooden pallets and packaging which unbroken has been wasted and i was asking why wrong dimension okay but still someone someone can can use it no we don't care wrong dimension the waste industry will care and i think this was this was one of the reasons i don't know when it happens as I said, I do not have an academic degree. I trying to get this moment because it's really a crime, but I don't know. I know almost exactly when the biggest crime against the planet started, which is the carbon emission trading. It has nothing to do with ecology. It's just a tool of economy. And it started generally in, I think, 1987 with the Kyoto Protocol. And at that time, with later support of the World Economic Forum, which was created in 1972, they started to push for this economical tool, which is easy money, but generally generating more harm to environment than any time before, because the smoke does not disappear. You just prepay for being evil. Mm. And this is what was called in Middle Ages in Europe, it was called indulgences. The kings pay to churches and they go and kill. And this is exactly what happens with the, with the carbon emission trading. So that's yeah. the answer. Not funny, but real. It sounds a lot like, again, coming back to the initial point where we discussed responsibility, right? And many things like that happened already. Responsibility of our kids as well, that parents give to schools and universities thinking that that would that is good and what they're getting out of it is good but not every school is like that and so many more so i agree with you that that may be one of the reasons why it is very overwhelming of course to the people on to keep track of everything but doesn't make it an excuse to 
to not know and not to you know work uh, on it let's say if you wake them up then it's very easy to adopt because it does not cost you anything just change of your mindset and if you try it once and you succeed in this six hour in the first three hours you will be looking forward to do the next because it's so great feeling that you made something which you start to change the world you with every single result you build wasteless world at the time and it is so great that really there is nothing comparable to this and this is what make the group around me bigger and bigger every single day and this is why the day has to have 20 hours if i will be able to not to sleep it will have 24 hours but i am not able not to sleep so. so for us to recap maybe you can can you share with us those six hours that you're talking about that people can yes. work on yes so the first R is to recognize that something must not become waste. Trust me, it's hard. If I show, if I use this again, and you see just the, just the, just the carton, you will see a package, a carton which is empty, so you can throw it away. So it's hard to recognize if you throw it away before to even reconsider that it must not be a, a waste. So, number one, uh, recognize. Number two, it's even harder because it's called a reconsider reconsider what you do with the item which you just save what you do with this because you see in it a carton but you can put a pencil inside or you can make it into the building stones for your kid and he can build up to it you can paint it, you can do a lot. So this is a reconsideration. These two points are hard, but the reward came in the third point. Realize it. Simply do it. Take your idea and put it in a real world. Probably, and I have to warn, probably for the first, second, third time you fail. But then when you succeed, it's a feeling of victory which will never lost you and when you need for the first time you need months to process this three hours the next time you will need weeks the next time you will need days right now for me i need seconds if you show me something i need few seconds time to consider what it can be next not the original the original is clear but what it can be next and this is the great because you improve your brain every single time. And if you succeed with this three, there is nothing to reuse, reuse or recycle. Mm -hmm. Because you will have a product, not waste. And this is what makes it so strong. And it, it's great. You can apply it not only on the physical waste. You can apply it on a process. If you work in an Excel, exactly the same. You can put it on a presentation. You can in, in, in a shop, no matter what you do, six R are applicable everywhere up to the level of governance. And that's that's really great. Wow. Michael, thank you so much for this beautiful conversation. I have been learning a lot from you, even though we connected just last week. It's beautiful. It's very inspiring, very refreshing. So where are you the most active? Where can people follow your work? Please link it in. That's the basic. If you are not sure, input my name, Mike Rada in a Google search. I am a heavy writer, so you will see a lot of content probably, but LinkedIn is the best. I have a YouTube channel. I'm on a social media as well. But if you start with LinkedIn, you will get the most of the information which I am sharing with everyone. And of course, you can get in touch with any one of the 102 ambassadors in 102 country. They will direct you to me or they will provide information needed for you to make the next step. But let's get together. Let's meet like I meet with Anna and Let's change the world together. There is no time to waste. Let's do it right now, right here. Thank you, Michael. And before we end, let me wish to everyone 
the same I wish every time. So let your time be free of waste and wasting in all its forms. Stay safe and free. Because if you do, you will live meaningful life. And and announce it, we end all the time the speeches with this sign, which show up that we are not number one, but we follow one aim. And this is to build wasted work.